Hey everyone, this is gonna be my first react video. I have scoured basically YouTube to find something that I found interesting because there's a lot of um, more random stuff out there. But one thing that the, the two channels that I generally go to when, I, when it comes to like videos that I am interested in is Jubilee or The Cut. And those two are pretty much filled with the most random concepts and ideas and conversations but I like them and I thought we would react to this one so this is five British people versus one fake person and what I'm gonna do at the start is I'm gonna make a prediction based on what I could see and if I get the answer right happy days but we'll see how that goes so we're gonna kick off with this. I am British. I am British. I am British. I'm British. I am British. I'm British. Okay, so we got the grid here. Oh, okay, so just looking. I'm gonna base the first bit off appearance. I don't know too many British people personally, so this is gonna be interesting. Top middle guy looks American, so I'm gonna go top middle for the fake person. <laughs> Yeah, he looks I'm American nervous. as hell. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous too. I'm actually a dual citizen, uh, US and UK. I um, grew up in England, in London, and I moved to America when I was 12. The dude's wearing a run New York City shirt. Isn't that American enough? Unless he's trying to catch us out. I think, honestly, that... We'll see, but... So you'll hear I have a bit of a like funky accent. I'm not a dual citizen, I'm a citizen of the- She's strong English, like from what I can gather already, accent, like demeanor, the way that she presents herself is just so British. I, I, 100% British. I'm not even thinking of her. So if, if it's her, it'll surprise me. UK, but I also moved when I was 12 and oh, cool. my accent for the most part, I think I still sound kind of British. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm a citizen of the UK. Oh, I spent about four years in India, so I got a bit of that as well. And I moved to the US two years ago for UCLA, so I'm a student right now. I'm also a citizen of the UK. I moved to the US two months ago. Welcome. Um, I lived in Canada before that for four years, which was horrible because I hate the cold. Um, <laughs> I've lived here for 11 years. Already gives me American vibes. He's just dripping American right now. Years. I'm from Liverpool. Um, um, yeah. I've been here a long time, so my accent kind of sounds muddled, but I'm a Scouser. Not buying it, bro. Not buying it. Scouse? I'm also a dual citizen. Um, I moved here when I was 12. Uh, well, I got my dual citizenship when I was 12. Lots of people got their dual citizenships at 12. I'm suspicious. <laughs> got eyes on you. Not very <laughs> I said it first. That's true, that's true. You're from London, right? I don't know too much about dual citizenships apart from like, obviously if you have family that are from another country and have a citizenship there, you kind of like automatically get access to that citizenship. Kind of, I don't know how it works. Um, I don't have any kind of sources in front of me, but I think that'd be really cool to have a dual citizenship where you could literally just move to another country without as much of a process, I guess. Again, I've never done it, but I remember asking my family, because my mother's side is Greek, if there was like a chance I could have a dual citizenship. Not that I would move to Greece, but that would be pretty cool. In the UK you from? Yeah, London. London. Yeah, yeah. Leicester. Liverpool. Liverpool. Where are you from? London. Oh, London. I'm from Manchester. What part um, of London? Peckham. No way! Okay, I'm from Upper Norwood. Yeah. Where specifically in West. London? I don't know. The, the first girl's also giving me American vibes as well, so... West, okay. yeah. I'm from Leicester and Wigston. Oh, okay, nice. Where in Liverpool? I studied there. Um, I was I was born in uh, West Derby. Okay. Mm. Wigston, that's right near uh, Oatby. Yes. Market so. Harbour. Market Harbour. Sounds familiar. Yeah. I mean, um, I grew up in a very small bubble. <laughs> I mean, my parents would take me everywhere. Um, and I grew up in India for like 14 to 18, and then go back to the UK, finish up my school there. And How long in. were you in Leicester for? I went from zero to 14, was born in Leicester. Yeah. That's cool. I feel like someone from Leicester would have automatically known where Market Harbour is. I'm from Manchester, and I know where Market Harbour is. He's on him already. He's like jumping down their throat. He, he is on to it. Tiny little town. I don't know a lot about English geography because I was so in my own world. And yeah, my parents would take me around everywhere. So it, his story was convincing to me because that's similar to my story. What were you guys' first impressions of America? Really Big. overwhelmed. Big, right? <laughs> Big. It's like, oh huge my God. portions with their food. Like every <laughs> place. Very different. I will say, based on my own perspective, um, 
I like America because it's very touristy driven like you know I would love to go there and do all the touristy stuff but at the same time just seeing <laughs> all of the media on America and like all of the problems I'm a little bit nervous to go there now but um yeah I'm interested to see what they say about it it's like their medium-sized so pizza is our large yeah. size pizza yeah. it's overwhelmed the imperial system <laughs> oh, yes <laughs> Horrible. Yes. Well, I've been here for two months and I'm still trying to get used to Fahrenheit. It's really yeah. stressing me yeah. out. Mm -hmm. uh. Fahrenheit needs to go. I'm sorry. I absolutely despise Fahrenheit and I'm so sick of Americans saying like, oh my God, it's like 40 degrees. It's freezing cold. That is not how I operate. I cannot distinguish Fahrenheit from Celsius. I cannot calculate it in my head. Can we just abolish this and just stick to one metric scale, please? The temperature is one. <laughs> Things like that, you know. And like, I work off a 24-hour clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still got that, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think tipping culture is pretty bad. Oh, everything tipping is, cultures. Everything, whatever the price is, oh, it's a, like at least three dollars. We can stay in this conversation, babe. Yeah, tipping culture is different. I personally am, <laughs> I, I don't know with tipping culture, like what's appropriate because I see like a lot of stuff online where customers have only tipped 10% or something of a bill and it's a really big bill and the waitress is like fuming and she's like, I don't understand it, so we don't really have that here. We have like a tip jar that doesn't even go to the individual person, it goes to the company. So if you find a waitress really excellent at their job, you literally could probably only tell them that because if they take the tip for themselves, they could get in really big trouble. So it's very different. <laughs> I got a lot of questions like people assume because you're British you like something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when One Direction was big, they're like, you're British, you like One Direction. I was yeah, like, no, I no. have heard maybe two of their songs. Or like Harry Potter, Hot Take, I haven't seen all of the movies. I've only seen like two. You're joking. Uh, it's the exact same in Japan with anime. Like if I've spoken to a few Japanese people and I've always said like, oh, do you like anime? Obviously. And they were just like, no. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was actually genuinely shocked because it's such a stereotype that Japanese people love everything Japanese, like um, pop culture wise, but it's, it's not true. I'm <laughs> sorry, I know, that's like the peak British thing and I haven't done it. Well, like the first thing they say is like, talk about tea or, wa yeah, and right. or tea water. Yeah, right, tea and coffee. They always, oh, yeah. they always say, say water. Or like pip pip cheerio, yeah. like sorry, no one says that. His story at first. If they vote my guy, this will be great. Just kind of seemed like he was just making something up. Okay, why is no one automatically voting the guy with the New York City shirt on? I, they're, they're picking the other guys. I wasn't suspicious of them at all. You're the worst British accent I've heard ever. I'm, I'm so convinced to. Thank you. Thank you. He didn't know his geography. Oh. Uh, I was just shocked. I was country? a bit sheltered, like, but so I didn't know my geography on? very well. But I was wondering when they're going to get Michael out. Yeah, please. Can we just get him out now? Because he's such a fraud. That was surprising. Yeah, he sounded very British. <laughs> I think it's a joke. I think everyone's British. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when, when I meet people, they always say, oh, you're from London. They automatically like, yeah, yeah, assume yeah. everyone's from London. I'm yeah. like, no, I'm from Liverpool. They're yeah. like, Oh, the Beatles, and they mentioned the Beatles, but <laughs> the UK is so big, like they just think it's just Which London. Which is funny because I feel like a fake when I say I'm from London, because it's like, oh, of course. If it is her, I'm going to be shocked, because right now I don't understand how anybody else in the room is not picking on the other guy. You're from London. I spoke to someone that thought London was the country. England oh. is my city. One time oh. someone asked me, are you from England or Britain? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because Americans <laughs> don't know geography <laughs> at all. I will say, <laughs> since living here, I have felt my just general world knowledge declining as I go through the <laughs> education system. I don't know anything about anywhere anymore. For me, since I moved when I was 12, which is uh, seventh grade here in the States. She mentioned um, seventh grade, and usually we say year seven or year eight or year nine, and it just threw me off. The biggest change I noticed was how students address their teachers. Like, it's very informal, you know? Whereas I think growing up in England, like, you would never question your teacher, you know? Or like, I feel like the parents have that kind of what school did you go to? Yeah. <laughs> it was funny because obviously growing up in England, um, you wear uniforms all the time. It is the same in Australian schools as well, depending. I went to an all-girls school. We had the formal uniform and the PE uniform. And the skirts were to the knees. The hats that we wore were like embroidered, like solid hats that we could not lose. Like we had to have them on us all the time. But we didn't have like a summer and winter uniform. We had 
like a cardigan for winter that we could only wear that cardigan because it was the school cardigan. You're not allowed to bring in your own. So very strict with uniforms. Um, and that pretty much was like all the schools I went to really. They're very strict on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was lavender in the summertime with white socks. Yeah, you have a winter and, and summer uniform. And winter, summer uniform yeah. and a PE uniform that changes mm -hmm. based on the mm -hmm. season What school did you go to? <laughs> 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 Shout out. Although thinking yeah. about it, like I feel like I'm so glad that we had a uniform in school oh, because yeah. Yeah. the poor fashion choices I made at 13. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, so, so glad I didn't have to go to school dressed like that. No, genuinely. <laughs> I look back at my Facebook photos <laughs> and want to disassociate from the, whoever that girl was. It wasn't me. She was a little bit quieter than the rest of the group. Oh, hi guys. No. <laughs> you guys are good. You guys are good. I think I said grade seven. There are words that I say in the American way. All right, majority rules. That I means like we move on British. to round Rocco three. So you guys still think the mole's in the box right now? Who? Who well, do you think I it is? No suspicions <laughs> well, I have no who, do you, who do you think it is? Well, we can't tell you right can now, can we? Yeah, <laughs> you I thought you guys were all British. British. Like, I really was ready to... Surely Honestly, people are picking up on to pick up on some uh, accent glitches. I'm just a really suspicious person, generally. Okay. So. <laughs> if you had to pick one item from a supermarket, what was it like your favourite item from that store? So, chocolate fingers. <gasps> Hey, this is a really random thing to say, but the meal deal, the Tesco meal deal. Oh my God, yes. They're, they're always the best. I, ironically, there were these, it came in a yellow package. It was like an American pancake. It was so good, you put it in the toaster. And I put it in yeah. the toaster all the time. It was really tasty. It was just a generic, I, I think no, it might have been I don't know that one. <laughs> but it, Rocco's fine, leave him out of it. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't something notable. Mm. What would you get? The prawn cocktail sandwich, <gasps> definitely. Oh, no, I like this crisp, the prawn cocktail yeah, yeah. crisp. Pink one. I think the crisps I miss the most are Monster Munch and Quaver. I was going to say quavers. I was going to say quavers. And we're going. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to love it. He didn't know what disco chips were. You mother yeah. Okay, wait, you know. I'm surprised. He knows, I, you know. Definitely I'm really British. bitter about being know. voted out. Yeah. Just because somebody doesn't know the same snack as you does not mean that their nationality should be questioned. If you think the mole is still in the box and you'd like to continue the game, raise your hand. But, oh God. <laughs> uh, I still feel she might be the mole. Really? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm really He's like, still in there. He's <laughs> he's raising his hand now because he knows. Okay, that he's being so called. you got your dual citizenship when you were twelve. Did you move with your family and where did you move to? I got sponsored by my auntie. Sponsored? Yeah, we got sponsored from when we were really young, so pretty much when we were born by the time it came through. That was a waiting list back then, so wow. it, we came through when we were 12. When we were kids, we used to come every year. My mum wanted us to move, you know, or have the option when we are older to be able to go back and forth, you know. I've been here for 11 years. I came in 2012, and I originally came over to see my sister. She lives in North Carolina. She has her own little deli, so I was helping her out, and then in 2014. Okay, so maybe I am wrong. He is American, but he was living in Britain for a while. I'm still getting sus though. I, mean, I moved to LA and I've been here since. Yeah. Your turn. Okay, I yeah. know I, you guys are like ganging up on me. No, so no, no. My dad works at an IT company mm -hmm. and so they asked if he could be the manager in LA and we all moved and we've been here for 12 years. Okay. Went to school here. You said you go to UCLA, yeah? I go to UCLA. I'm studying linguistic anthropology, minoring in French. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Linguistic anthropology. Linguistic, yeah. Do you know a lot about football? No. Like, do you know any of the teams in the Premier League? Well, okay. I never got also? into football okay. really when I was there. I only supported the teams that my friends. Which ones? What teams? So, che obviously, Chelsea, mm -hmm. Arsenal, Man U were like the main ones. Mm -hmm. I don't watch sports in general, really. Okay. Um, if a game's on, if the World Cup's on, obviously. Yeah. Neither do I, though. Like, our country has, you know, really strong football ties, like, you know, NRL, AFL. I don't freaking watch that. Watch it. England, all the way. But mm. in general. I don't really watch too much football, but if you grow up in England. You'll, you'll know about the Premier League. Yeah. I do say that for the state of origin. Um, I will watch the state of origin uh, sometimes, but I'm not like enthusiastically about it. <laughs> yeah, no. Gosh, this is hard. Thank you. Oh! I had a feeling. Why? I think they'd made a pact. <laughs> and I was just the only one not in that pact. Do you feel confident in your choice? I do. Definitely. 
You're not the mole, are you? <laughs> no. Okay, good. If the lights turn green, that means that you have voted the mole out okay. and you both win. If the lights turn red, that means the mole is still in the box and you lose. So. If you did, you did a good job. No, I'm coming from home. <laughs> yeah, nothing to worry about. Three. It's gonna be, okay, I'm calling it out. It's gonna be red. Two, one. Will the mole reveal themselves in three? Excuse me. Two. Okay. All right. If I, I got the first one wrong, okay, so looking at them now, the person that was the mole was the first person. One. Oh! He knew it. Are you kidding me? Oh, that was my first pick, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I got it from the get go. You knew it was Tejas and you continued to play. <laughs> I told you it's all about the De Niro's, yo. I, I studied, but not, not the geography. I was looking at the map, but I did recognize uh, I'll all the places. To and I could always those. do somewhat of a British accent, uh, or at least I thought I could. And then I just Googled, like, where's the most amount of brown people from the <laughs> neighborhood? And I was like, Lester, Lester it is. Your accent was really good. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking, yeah. I, I had some, somewhat of a plan, but not knowing geography is pretty American, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flabbergasted. <laughs> Dumbstruck. <laughs> Bewildered. He probably sounded more British than me. I can't. I can't. Okay, so I was clearly wrong through that whole thing, but that's okay. Uh, we'll we'll try again in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. This is actually really fun to do, so I may or may not do more of them. But I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.